I am really excited uh, to welcome Barry to our conversation. Um, Barry has been a member of the PNES recovery group that I do through Whitestone Professionals, and he's been brave enough to come on here and, and share with us a little bit about, about his journey. So Barry, first of all, I want to just thank you because I know that this is not easy to do, and, uh, and I know that this is very vulnerable, and so I just I applaud you, and I just want to say thanks. No problem. <laughs> so can you share with everybody a little bit about your journey, how it began? Sure. Um, well, I was in a, uh, an abusive relationship for 13 years. Um, I was unaware I was being abused. Uh, and but, sub, but subconsciously, it was affecting me a lot over a long period of time. Mm. And then when I left, I felt extremely free and happy. And then a few, a few months later, some strange things just started happening. Uh, people would look at me and say, what are you talking about? Why are you being weird? And all of a sudden, I'm like, I have no idea what you're talking about. And they go, you just asked me where we are. <laughs> We're at your house, for example. And I'm like, what? I had no idea any of this was going on. And then um, I remember one of the first ones when I realized where I actually started admitting that there was something wrong was when we went to a restaurant. It was very loud. And all of a sudden, my father was staring at me, and he said, what's wrong with you? And I said, what do you mean? He goes, you've been staring at your hands for a minute. And you're not talking to me. <laughs> you weren't responding. I'm like, what? Is going? And that's when things started snowballing. That's when panic and stress and, oh, my God, there's something. I'm going crazy. Mm -hmm. And that's when it just progressed down a rabbit hole of getting worse and worse. And that's when the shaking started, the biting of my tongue, the ambulance rides, the broken bones, the... Endless, endless trouble. Broken bones? Yeah, I had a seizure at work, and I fell off a ladder. I fell 12 feet onto a driveway. Don't remember anything. I just remember waking up in an ambulance. Hmm. Um, and then the next day, I actually ripped, I had another seizure, and I ripped the cast off my hand. And oh. went back to the hospital. Yeah, we went back to the hospital, and then the, doctor looked at the cast and he's like how did you do this i'm like i have no idea he goes did, like that's incredible <laughs> we have to take you for x-rays again because you might have broken your hand more so yeah uh, i've had probably the most bizarre strange episodes i even had one when i was in physiotherapy for my injuries i had another seizure in the waiting room and i ended up in an ambulance again <laughs> so uh yeah the last um i had one where i ended up in the ditch in my car I was just driving home somewhere, and I woke up in the ditch. Oh, my goodness. How did I get here? I had no idea. And I try, and after my seizures, I'm very confused and stuff. So I tried to drive out of the swamp, <laughs> but my car was completely wrecked. That's how just out of it I was. Wow. But no, at least knew I wasn't drunk or anything. He, didn't, he just said, okay, sorry about your luck. And then I just stopped driving after that. So uh, now I don't work. I don't drive. I don't really go many places unsupervised anymore so um, yeah it's been a very downward spiral for the last few years mm. so you said that you fell off um, the ladder at work and I, I love the way I met you actually because I had just posted that video about uh, I liken the kind of coaching that I do and the type of coach I am to being an arborist and the next thing I know I get a message from you saying I was an arborist and I just thought what are the chances? <laughs> yeah. It was just so awesome. Yeah. Um, so from the start of the shaking, how long did it take before you were diagnosed with psychogenic non-epileptic seizures? Um, well, I, I went to the doctor and his first reaction was, oh, it's, it's anxiety. Because I didn't really know. I couldn't really give him the real story anyways. I'm like, I don't know. I'm kind of shaking a lot and looking at my hands. He's like, mm -hmm. maybe it's anxiety. So he gave me anxiety. Medication didn't do anything. Then 
then he gave me uh, anti-depression medication. And he gave me, then I'm like, I think they're micro sleeps, which is something people have too. They don't get enough sleep. They have these things where they pass out. So we tried sleeping pills and just nothing was working. Mm. And then I, then I started doing the research and figured out maybe this is epilepsy. So I told the doc, he's like, yeah, that could be it. So then I started getting all the tests done for epilepsy and all that. And, um, and um, I actually got people to start filming my seizures, which was the best thing that ever happened. Because now I was, then I took it to the, um, the epilepsy doctor, the neurologist. Mm -hmm. And he looked, he goes, this is an epilepsy. This, these are the, the psychogenic non-epileptic seizures. And he said, it's, I go, well, what can I do? What can I do about it? He goes, he goes if it was epilepsy, I could help you. He goes, you can't. Yeah. Uh, he goes, there's a few psychologists around here, but no one's really, because this is like a, it's almost like a new condition and there's no one there really to help us. Mm. The best help I found is from other people with the condition, <laughs> the support and stuff like that. But yeah, it's uh, I went on the keto diet because I thought it was epilepsy. So I changed my whole diet. Um, I eliminated a ton of people from my life that were just not nice to me and all this stuff. And no, it's only recently that I actually officially got the diagnosis. And that was when I ended up getting about 10 doctors together and finally saying, yeah, this is what it is. And I had evidence that they were happening and all that stuff. So it okay. took about, yeah, I would say three years. But you got to remember, that's me doing the research, wow. right? Wow. I heard the average length is seven years. So I did it a lot faster than most, but that's because it became my passion to figure out what this was. So mm, Wow. Oh, I'm sorry that it took so long. That's all right. Well, I mean, everyone's journey is, it's so unique and so special and, and it gives hope to, to speak into other people. So I'm just, I'm really gra grateful you know, for you sharing that. So let me ask you a question. Since more women are prone to get PNES than men, I think it's about 70 you know, 70 to 30 or 75 to 25. Do you think, in your opinion, did you think that played any, any role in why it took so long to get the diagnosis? Yeah. Um, because one of the main reasons people get this condition is from abuse that is one of the main things. And me being a man, I was always in denial that I was being abused. Like she would actually hit me and, I would say, you can't do that. You can't hit me. And she says, I'm a girl. It doesn't matter. And I actually believe that logic. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, you're right. You're just a girl. She just didn't physically hurt me. It didn't mean it's not abuse. Right. And she'd scream at me for days and stuff like that. And I'd just be like, I don't care. You're just... I never thought that was abuse. Right. And that's why another reason why it took so long for me to start figuring out, like, you know, when these strange things start happening to me, I'm like, I don't... I don't because it's PTSD as well. I'm like, I don't have it. I'm a man. I don't have it. I'm moving on. I'm doing better and all that stuff. And no, I needed, yeah. I needed to just realize that, no, I'm hurt and I need to take time and de-stress. And this is something I can't handle. I can't just move on and all that. So yeah, I think being a man probably did delay it and also just admitting it to people, right? Mm -hmm. Like I remember someone called the uh, labor board on me Mm. At work and said so he's unsafe to work with because he's and I lost it. Like, you don't do that. Like <laughs> I can, I don't. There's no problem with me. I'm fine and all that stuff. Even it, it just took a very long time for me to admit that there was even a problem. Mm. So, yeah, that's hard. Mm -hmm. That's definitely hard. And I'm so sorry what you went through. I don't care if you're a man or a woman or a child. Mm -hmm. We do not have the right to take the power away from somebody else. Yeah. It is wrong. It doesn't matter what your gender or age, it is wrong. So yes. I'm sorry that you went through that. Sorry. And I thank you. Thank you for sharing that because that I know that that's hard to say, um, hard to share sometimes and, and be open and vulnerable. So I really appreciate that, that you're willing to share it with people. No problem. I know it helps a lot to share these stories. So Yes. Yes, it does. You'll be amazed at, at the responses. Yes. So, well, thank you for, for sharing with us the journey. Um, I know that you have some exciting news. It's been 
a certain amount of time since the last time you had a seizure uh, minus a blip. But can you share with us how long it's been and what you think has attributed to that time period? Well, um, it has been over two months now since I've had the seizure. Um, they were, I was having them daily at one point. Um, and yeah, I think just, first of all, hope. Hope was my number one thing. Because at one point I lost hope and they were getting worse and worse mm -hmm. and worse. And then I just started getting hope back. And like, and I guess I surrounded myself with so many loving people. I eliminated all the toxic people in my life. And now I'm not working, obviously, because of all these injuries I have. And instead of being, once again, that, that male mentality of I need to work, I need to earn a living, you know, I can't, can't be a wimp and all this stuff. I've, I've just let all that go. Right. You know, I, my job now is to heal and just accept that I need to heal. I'm hurt. Just get better. And I'm not a wimp for not for admitting that, you know. I'm, yeah. So it's just uh, that's where I am. I've completely I don't let anything get to me. Like, I have setbacks, and I don't go. Oh, I'm set back again. Oh, what's wrong with me? I'm such an idiot. I'm such a no. I don't. I have a setback. Yes. That's fine. Yeah. That's my whole mentality has gone that way, and I know that I will. I will recover soon. Mm -hmm. Well, bravo for you. I'm so excited for your journey. I'm Thank so you. excited for the hope that you get to give. You've been such an encouragement in our group. So mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm really excited to see the people and the lives that you're going to touch through this. So um, before we end this, is there anything specifically that you'd like to share? Any part of your personal hope that you'd like to share? Um, well, Everyone's very specific when it comes to why they have this condition. So I'm not going to obviously give you too much advice, but the two main pieces of advice is hope and gratitude. Mm. Don't lose your gratefulness for all the good things you have in your life. There's still good things in there. Don't focus on the negative. Deal with the negative when you have to, but don't focus on that's not what your life is about. Your life is about being around good people. And just having hope that it will get better. It's not a lost thing. It's not something you have for life. It's you're hurt and you will heal. Yes. Do you have any activity that you do? Any kind of gratitude activity that you'd like to share? Um, well, like I said, I've completely changed my life. For, that's the one positive that's come out of all of this is that I've completely changed my life. Like, I don't smoke. I don't do drugs. I don't I drink, but very little, like, I completely eat so much healthier now and all this stuff because I'm just happy to be alive after all this that I've been through, right? And I'm so grateful. And I, I go swimming, I exercise, I do yoga, I meditate. Um, I do my, my, my version of praying every night. I give, I, I give gratefulness to the universe or God or whatever you want to call them. Mm. And I just, yeah, I just do that every day. And I know that that's what the whole purpose of all this was is to make me the person I am now. So. Yes. yes, it is quite a journey and it's very exciting. Oh, well, thank you again. Um, we're going to have another conversation with Barry at, in a little bit. So uh, I hope you join us on that. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.